Hello and welcome along to another one of Al's Geek Labs. Today I, uh, I thought I'd give you a quick video um, simply because I haven't had enough time to finish my next video which is all about networking in MS-DOS. Um, it's quite a bit of content in that one coming up so I missed my usual Sunday slot so rather than disappoint I know you're all gagging for more content uh, but in the meantime I thought I'd just give you a quick video and today's video is all about um, using uh, modules. Now if you know anything about the demo scene or about how music was done back in the 80s and then the early 90s by professional artists as well, I mean you've got bands like Orbital and so forth, uh, then you, you might know about modules. So back around 1987 the Commodore Amiga was the platform which uh, basically launched the mod format or module format and the idea behind modules is simple, you get a sample of a musical instrument and you combine those over a series of tracks and so they're called voices. So you combine them in an order, you change the pitch and the tone and all sorts of things. I'm not very musical as you can probably tell but basically what you do is you put them over, um, you use them in an application called a tracker and that tracker then creates um, the music that you, you want and then you play it back through the module player and up until now it's been pretty difficult to get a module player to work on anything but around a 386 PC. Today I'm going to show you how you can get mod files playing on a XT PC or a 286 class machine. Here's how. So this is a 4.77 megahertz PC, um, it's an XT actually. Uh, and this is the program here, GLX. And this works quite well on uh, 286 at 6 megahertz, but this is at 4.77. Uh, so let's try and listen to a mod file here. So this is called the Galaxy Module Player. So as you can hear, doesn't really work very well. Um, which is which is not great, but if we go to MXT16, so this is um, this is called Modmaster, and it's a particular version that's written uh, for the XT. Uh, so it's really stripped down and lightweight. So let's let's give it a try. I'll just do an intro um, of um, ten seconds. So you can see that it, it actually works pretty well and if we look at the sample rate just on this mod, 15 samples, 4 voices and this is all at 16,000 Hz, obviously 8 bit not 16 bit. But you can get the idea, the quality is, um, is pretty good and um, the only problem with this one here at the moment is that it um, doesn't respond to the keyboard for quite some while and you can see the display is pretty much um, not, it's not moving but it's, it's very good, it's already working pretty well and obviously if you uh, run a machine which is uh, a little bit faster things are um, quite, quite, uh, quite good. So this is being made um, now and um, you can see that this has got a copyright here um, of 2020 so um, watch this space but this this is great um, I can listen to some of my old music and some of my not so old music on a PC XT that's um, that's really never never been able to play this sort of music in the past all right, so here's a wee website called modarchive.org and it's probably one of the better websites for finding mod music. And of course, music is available in, um, in all sorts of different formats these days. It's not just in the original MOD or mod file format. There's S3M, which I think is the Scream Tracker 3 module format. There's also XM and a number of other ones. So if you want to get a, get a module and play it and uh, download it, you can do so just by um, going here. You can go um, top rating, for example, and look at all the different uh, modules there. There's all the 10 out of 10 rated uh, modules and you can see some details as well. 
Um, uh, I, uh, if you know a particular artist, of course, you can search for an artist um, or a module name by name. And here's one that I know. Um, this guy um, made a lot of demo scene music back in the day. And so I can browse his module. So there's quite a lot of um, things that you can uh, do on this website. So a really good um, website there. So just going over the module players, first of all, um, the first um, module player that you saw, which um, can actually play uh, mods on uh, apparently an 8088 or a 286. Um, it says, although at 4.7 megahertz, don't expect too much. And as per the demo that you saw, it isn't exactly very much at all. But this is the original um, low um, system requirements module player called the Galaxy Music Player. So you can get it from poe.net. It's in there. And it came out, as you can see here, in, in July of 1994. Um, Modmaster came out later and it uh, has a really nice interface and it was very popular um, and it, you know, it came out much later. Now what what has happened here is that the gentleman, uh, Freddie V, as he knows, is known by on this forum, Vogons.org, he's taken some of the source code uh, from version 2, I believe, um, of Modmaster and gone and uh, stripped it down to its bare minimum and tried to make it play um, mods and SVM files from uh, on a, on a, even on an 8088XT so, or a PC. Um, so you can see that um, that does work indeed. It might be a bit laggy. Um, but certainly when I flick my turbo switch and go into 286 mode at 6 megahertz, which is not fantastically faster than that, you can really see it fly and it plays everything just fine. But even on a 4.7 megahertz, if all you want to do is listen to the module, there's maybe a little bit of lag when it starts off, but then after that, you can play the module just fine. The fact that you can do that, um, you know, listening to modules which have, you know, four, vi four five, six, seven voices, you know, different voices playing simultaneously at 22,000 hertz. Um, it's quite, um, it's quite a, a feat really. So yeah, um, definitely, definitely. If you, if you're into the demo scene, um, or you're into composing your own music, or of course, if you're just interested in listening to music from back in the day, and of course, newer music as well, as it comes out, um, this is definitely something to watch for. You can see here, this was, um, the 10th of March 2020 um, was the 16th beta release of Modmaster XT. And he wants, um, the Freddie, Freddie the gentleman here, wants to release the 1.0 by around mid-April um, and he's asking for help. So if you can download the um, XT uh, version 1.6, beta 1.6 and, and give it a shot, um, the one that you saw there running was indeed the version 1.6 beta. So um, there's still a few bugs to go but it's, it's getting close and one would hope that by the time it's ready for the 1.0 there'll be yet more optimizations that will allow the product to play even smoother on a PC or a 4.7 megahertz machine. So really interesting. Um, I love to see stuff like that, making the PC, the old vintage machines, even more useful. Um, today, there's still people making um, tools and applications. Um, next week, I'm going to show you Michael Brutman's um, 2020 version of the um, MTCP TCP IP networking stack for MS-DOS. So all of this great software coming out um, for retro machines that bring real use cases to these old machines. That's great. That's it for, what, uh, for this video. Thanks very much for watching and I'll be back real soon. Thanks a lot.